Beloved of God, this is Father Michael along with the rest of the team welcoming you to the God Minute. Thank you for joining us in prayer today. You know, today is the feast of St. Martin of Tours, who was the third bishop of Tours. He has become one of the most familiar and recognizable Christian saints in France, patron saint of many communities and organizations across Europe. A story is told about when young Martin was a soldier, he came across a beggar and he tore his cloak and wrapped it around the beggar to stay warm. And that night he dreamt that the beggar was Jesus. And in the morning when he woke, his cloak was fully restored. Isn't that a great story? I love those kind of stories about our saints. Well, let's ask for his intercession today and place ourselves in the presence of the Lord as we begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O Lord, open my lips. And And my mouth shall declare your praise. Psalm 77. Are you there? I cry aloud to God. I cry to God to hear me. On the day of my distress, I seek the Lord. By night, my hands are stretched out unceasingly. I refuse to be consoled. When I think of God, I groan. As I meditate, my spirit grows faint. You have kept me from closing my eyes in sleep. I am troubled and cannot speak. I consider the days of old, the years long past, I remember. At night I ponder in my heart as I meditate, my spirit probes. I will recall the deeds of the Lord, yes, recall your wonders of old. I will ponder all your works, on your exploits I will meditate. Your way, God, is holy. What God is as great as our God? You are the God who does wonders. Among the peoples, you have revealed your majesty. Glory be to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the letter to the Romans, chapter 8, verse 18. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are as nothing compared with the glory to be revealed to us. The Word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. There's this quote attributed to St. Augustine that says, Hope has two beautiful daughters. Their names are Anger and Courage. Anger at the way things are, and courage to see that they do not remain as they are. I find myself praying with this image of hope from time to time, especially when I'm feeling some anger, perhaps righteous anger, towards an injustice I encounter or those whom I serve experience. Perhaps you can relate? Recently, and well, often really, I find myself clinging to hope, feeling the anger for sure, but praying for the courage, that other daughter. I was in a situation and I felt so helpless, like any effort I've tried or could try was left unanswered. So often we take on the role of advocates for social change, you know, working to dismantle unjust systems, empower those on the margins, work for systemic change. And sometimes all you do is hit brick wall after brick wall, and a way forward might seem impossible. As the quote goes, I was angry about the way things were, but I couldn't figure out a way to see that they do not remain as that in that way. So... I prayed with the beloved disciple and Mary at the foot of the cross and figured hope was what allowed them to remain there as Jesus suffered and died, as the crowds mocked him and humiliated him, treating him like a criminal. As they stood at the foot of the cross, 
Were they angry towards the injustice? Were they confused over the rapid change of events as the hosannas turned into crucify him? Were they filled with courage, trusting in the promise that something more was to come? That, as the reading from the Romans um, states, the sufferings of this present time are as nothing compared with the glory to be revealed. Perhaps the courage this calls for is choosing to trust in providence, even when it comes in the shape of a cross. I'm limited in what I can actually do sometimes, but God's abundant grace and my openness to participate in that grace, how dare I put limits on that possibility? I look up at the cross and I get angry because Jesus shouldn't be up there suffering. But Jesus looks down and perhaps sees things differently. I hope he sees things differently. I pray the Jesus I meet every day can look upon my scrambled attempts to serve with that gaze of love and mercy. I'm trying so hard to get him off the cross, and he's like, Kara, simmer down. Rest in me. And I'm like, Lord, you are bleeding and you are in pain. Come down. Let me help you. And he says again, rest in me holding out his wounded hands and marking me with his blood. Ah, I sigh. I suppose this is what it's all about. Perhaps the courage to enter into the suffering is where hope is leading me. The story of salvation didn't end at the foot of the cross on Calvary. St. Paul reminds us the sufferings of this present time are as nothing compared with the glory to be revealed to us. So as you go about your day, perhaps you're experiencing some of this righteous anger or find yourself with the beloved disciple and Mary standing at the foot of the cross. Remember that through the incarnation, our God is a God who knows our pain, who enters into the sufferings of the world. When I look around and wonder, where are you, God? Why don't you make this stop? I gaze upon the crucifix and I'm reminded, oh, there you are. This gives me comfort when I feel so helpless in my efforts to alleviate suffering or work for change. Jesus accepted the cross and transformed a torture device into the greatest symbol of sacrificial love. What was created to inflict harm ultimately gave life. I choose to trust in that power and hold on to hope with both daughters, anger and courage. Gathering our prayer and our praise into one, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who are glorified in the Bishop St. Martin of Tours, both by his life and death, make new, we pray, the wonders of your grace in our hearts, that neither death nor life may separate us from your love. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters, thanks so much for joining us in prayer today. I hope that you have a wonderful day. Take good care of yourself and one another, and we'll see you tomorrow. God bless. Mm -hmm.